morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update on Tropical Cyclone Alfred and Tropical Cyclone Bianca for February 26, 2025. A lot to get through in today's forecast update. We're going to be breaking down in detail the forecast and future project projections for Queensland and its cyclone situation now. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning with a look over in the Coral Sea with Tropical Cyclone Alfred. Now on the cusp of becoming a severe tropical cyclone, it has struggled to intensify overnight and it does look like that is uh, reflected in the satellite appearance, but it really looks like it's starting to build itself up quite nicely now. You can see it's now rotating around a very nice developing eye wall by the looks of things, or a nice developing eye with plenty of convection moving in from the northern side of the system here. It has struggled a little bit of wind shear, with a little bit of wind shear. You can see that it is a little bit higher, and that's why I've got a lot of this high-level cloud streaming off towards the Queensland coastline. Of course, no impacts bed or bearing in those uh, clouds that are moving towards the Queensland coastline, but at this time, it is obvious that this system has struggled with a little bit of wind shear overnight which has halted its intensification phase. Tropical Cyclone Alfred is expected to continue intensifying and will likely get to severe tropical cyclone status sometime later on today. In fact, it could very well be upgraded to a severe tropical cyclone by the time this video comes out. That would not surprise me at all. You can see wind observations on the reefs adjacent to the Queensland coastline in the Coral Sea averaging between 45 and 55 kilometers an hour up to about 55 kilometers an hour down at Frederick Reef. So they've been quite blowy here for the last couple of days. Hamilton Island is still at 40 kilometers an hour and it's been like that for the last couple of days as well. So those winds certainly are starting to pick up and you'll be able to tell that a tropical cyclone is a brewing in the Coral Sea. These winds are only going to get stronger as well. I'm going to be watching the ones at Marion Reef and Frederick Reef like a hawk over the coming couple of days because they'll be telling us exactly how strong this tropical cyclone is and also whereabouts it is expected to head. There's no real good like uh, having a look at the current situation with this tropical cyclone. Let's just jump straight into the forecast right now which I might add is still very uncertain but let's jump straight into the forecast and see what is expected from tropical cyclone Alfred for the next couple of days. So it's the stock standard stuff. It's the same as yesterday, more or less. We're expecting a steady turn towards the south and in steady intensification, reaching a peak intensity sometime tomorrow afternoon or evening as a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone. In fact, with some forecast models now suggesting that this tropical cyclone is going to come quite close to Category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone status here. You can see peak winds up to about 140, 150 kilometers an hour with gusts up to about 170 to 180 kilometers an hour around the center of the storm. So it could actually get a little bit stronger than what we have initially been expecting. Between the other forecast models as well, there is pretty good congruence between this system here getting quite close to Category 4 status. Again, that doesn't really matter an awful lot for Queensland. Uh, it's still going to come ashore as a weak tropical cyclone if it does make that landfall. But again, there's still a lot out here for the storm to do. There's plenty of uh, really good conditions ahead of this tropical cyclone for it to make the most of. And this time, it does look like those forecast models are now favouring a bit more of a stronger tropical cyclone up towards high end Category 3 or even Category 4 status. So that's an interesting little aspect on the forecast here. The forecast is, like I said, set in stone out till about Friday night, and then it really does begin to break down. I am expecting this tropical cyclone to take a turn for the Queensland coastline. That's reciprocated between all forecast models come Friday night and into Saturday morning. But it looks like it's going to get to Caddo Island here on the Eastern Bay forecast before on Sunday, recurving away from the Queensland coastline, making it its closest approach about as far away as Fraser Island is from Coffs Harbour. So basically the entire uh, distance of the Sunshine Coast is from the Gold Coast. We're expecting this tropical cyclone to be offshore, so not too far offshore, but still certainly a significant way offshore and nothing in the way of significant tropical cyclone impacts can be expected than this tropical cyclone recurves out into the Tasman Sea uh, and then down towards New Zealand. So that's what the Eastern Reef is suggesting here, or the Axis and the Eastern Reef are both suggesting pretty much the exact same thing. We were just taking a look at the Axis forecast model, but you can see that this forecast here is identical to what the Axis G3 is also saying. So getting towards Caddo Island sometime around Saturday or Sunday, being very slow moving, might I add, and then slowly recurving away down in towards the Tasman Sea and over towards New Zealand. That's a very valid forecast, and some of the ensembles and also the Bureau of Meteorology are now starting to pick up on that as well. The Bureau of Meteorology is calling for the tropical cyclone to get close to the Queensland coastline. There's cone of uncertainty still takes a tropical cyclone potentially as far north as Bowen, so they're still very unsure of where this tropical cyclone is going to go, but their initial track forecast is now taking the system for a recurve away from Queensland, which is very good news for Queensland residents that were quite worried about a, a, a landfall. The chances for that have just taken a hit this morning with how all these forecast models are playing out, but I'll get to that in a, in a later part of this video update. The one thing that is still mildly concerning me is the fact that the GFS is taking the system right into the Queensland coastline. That's not necessarily a problem, but the GFS is definitely what I would class as probably being the most reliable forecast model that we have out there, at least for this tropical cyclone. The GFS is very rare and miss in the Coral Sea, and it does look like it is doing a really good job right now with tropical cyclone Alpha, and by no means is past performance a future, uh, an, indi an indication of future performance here, but it does look like the GFS has done a really good job with tropical cyclone Alfred so far. So again, getting to about Caddo Island, some of those reefs adjacent to the Queensland coastline by Saturday and becoming very slow moving, but then making that turn 
turn towards the Queensland coastline. You can see initially heading down towards Mackay and then right and taking that southerly turn down towards Rockhampton and actually making a landfall on top of Yapoon. The GFS's forecast has been suggesting this for the last three days now. Landfall are between the Ogmore and Rockhampton area, so that's been really good congruency there. But I imagine that that's all modern flukes considering the, the ensembles, the miniature forecast that makes the major forecast model what it actually is, is taking the storm ashore anywhere between Mackay down towards Brisbane and then a pretty even split of forecast tracks taking the system right out towards the Coral Sea as well. So again, still a huge amount of uncertainty in regards to this system here and I think we're going to have to wait and see what actually happens tomorrow on the forecast. I am still confident in saying that by tomorrow we'll have a very definitive idea on what is expected from this tropical cyclone in terms of a landfall or close part of the, past of the Queensland coastline. We should be able to answer that question once and for all, but it is still very uncertain at this time. Again, the most likely time period for a landfall is between Sunday the 2nd of March out towards Wednesday the 5th of March at this time. It is now starting to draw a bit closer towards the 2nd or the 3rd of March, which is uh, good news considering that is a little bit closer and it means that the tropical cyclones can be le doing less of the stalling and moving between one spot and another uh, kind of stuff that we were once fearing that it would do, which would just cause immense rainfall along the Queensland coastline. So it's nice to see that the dates have now been narrowed down a little bit or a little bit closer. But mark my words, we will know th uh, stuff by tomorrow and if this tropical cyclone is trending out to see them, we'll call it that the landfall is not expected to happen. But just considering the fact that the GFS and even other forecast models as well that aren't available on windy.com, they're also suggesting the Queensland landfall. It's still a little bit too early to say that the Queensland landfall situation or the Queensland landfall threat is completely off the cards at this time. Ahead of this system, there's very good sea temperatures as well. You can see right down towards landfall, 29 or 28, 29 degrees Celsius. Uh, until it gets closer to the Queensland coastline, when they will begin to drop off a little bit here, you can see sea temperatures along the Queensland coastline, 27 to 28 degrees Celsius, a little bit warmer as you get up towards Mackay and Rockhampton, but anywhere further south of that, you'd be looking at 26, 27 degrees Celsius sea temperatures here. So not as favorable for this tropical cyclone. And then further out to sea, you can see sea temperatures are uh, even lower than that, down towards 25, 26, maybe even 27 degrees Celsius. So the tropical cyclone will uh, do well for itself until it gets south of out of the line of Rockhampton. Then I'm expecting steady weakening to kick in from that time onwards, and then some pretty rapid weakening once it gets south of the line of around Brisbane. And the driving factor behind this system here, which is the, one of the reasons why I'm not calling for this system to go into uh, a kind of a recurve mode here and head out towards New Zealand, is the fact that later on in the forecast period around Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have this strong high pressure system located over the North Island of New Zealand. This strong high pressure system here will be driving this tropical cyclone in towards the south central and the southeastern corners of Queensland. So I'm still a little bit confused considering the fact that the Eastern Weather Forecast still has this high pressure system, but the fact that this tropical cyclone swings into it and pushes it away, that's uh, quite a, a tall order for a small tropical cyclone to be able to do is to push a high pressure system as big as this one here, the Tasman Sea high pressure system, out of its way. So that's one reason why I'm kind of not suggesting the fact that the chances of a landfall have completely dropped off yet. Uh, the high pressure system has been forecast, or in the forecast for the last couple of weeks. You see the GFS is also calling for it. The Icon forecast model is calling for it. There's no discrepancies between the major forecast models. It's just different interpretations from the forecast models, and that's why I'm still holding firm on the fact that the chances for a landfall right now are marginally higher than the chances for no landfall. You can actually see much later on into the Eastern Wefts forecast period that whilst it takes the system down for a recurve, it then swings it back into the southeast of Queensland. That's that high pressure system once again kind of kicking in down here. The Tasman Sea high pressure system directing this system back towards Queensland. So much later on into the forecast period before it rallies away again, uh, sometime around the 7th or the 8th of March, I wouldn't be completely writing off the chances of a landfall at any period of time here because again, much later on into the forecast period, certainly some interesting stuff and some shenanigans could happen here with Tropical Cyclone Alfred. And it is once again reciprocated between the other forecast models. Even the axis right at the end of the forecast period or in yesterday's forecast at least was taking this system back over Lord Howe while and then back up towards Southeast Queensland. So we won't be writing off uh, any impacts along Queensland, even though this tropical cyclone looks like for the most part, it is going to recurve right out towards sea and into the Tasman Sea. Uh, but again, interesting aspect of the forecast and certainly one worth talking about. That's for sure. I just thought that I would add that in. Let's just drive, dive into my forecast right now. I'm going to be breaking down exactly what I expect from this system here. And I might also want to add here that this is still more of a hunch than it is a prediction or a forecast. So again, take it with a very heavy pinch of salt. But reading all of the comments of those ants going absolutely nuts on the central and south uh, east Queensland area, uh, it certainly is making me wonder that there is certainly at least some good rainfall on the cards here for this area, which means that a tropical cyclone is going to have to pass within close vicinity to Queensland. Again, that could mean anything. But at this time, I do still expect, based with all the signs and the forecast models that there is, 
is a tropical cyclone heading towards Queensland. Let's dive into my prediction pre projections right now. I am still expecting that landfall on Sunday or Monday, very late Sunday at the absolute earliest or in towards Monday in the similar area to where the GFS forecast is suggesting it. You can see around the Yapoon of the Rockhampton area bring this, shore, uh, this storm ashore as a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone. So still a very weak system by the looks of things. I'm expecting it to get up towards Category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone status over the coming couple of days, which will give this system a little bit less time to weaken off from a big peak intensity, but I still don't expect anything stronger than a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone to make a landfall. Just with land interaction and wind shear coming out of this high pressure system, especially if it heads a little bit further south, it will be substantially weaker and struggling for some of its organized convection to really take place. And as a result, this system, like I said, will be a much weaker tropical cyclone upon landfall. Right now, I'm giving a landfall chance for Rockhampton at about 12 to 15 percent. I know it's a very arbitrary number and it's also quite a low number at this time, but we're still not 100 percent sure where this system is going to be going. And I don't want to be getting anyone's hopes up or making anybody panic. And that's another important fact to this forecast as well, is that there is absolutely no need to panic. Like I said, we still don't know exactly what is happening here with Tropical Cyclone Alfred. And I would just like everybody to remain cool, calm and collected here. Watch the forecast and watch the predictions and make sure that you are in the know in the uh, weather world here and seeing where these tropical uh, well, where these tropical forecasts are taking this system. But at this time, we just don't know for sure where this tropical cyclone is going to be making a landfall. Regardless of if it makes landfall or not, very heavy falls can be expected along the North Queensland coastline. I mean, if we take a look at this, the GFS forecast, which is obviously calling for the landfall here. Did I say the North Queensland? I feel like I did. I mean, the southeast and the south central Queensland coastline. This is the GFS forecast here, taking the system ashore around the Rockhampton area with up to 400 millimeters of rainfall expected. And I would also like to add that the GFS is a notorious low ball when it comes to uh, rainfall as well. So we could be seeing substantially more rainfall than that. But one thing's for sure, anywhere in the mountains south of the Whitsundays, through Mackay, down towards Rockhampton, Gladstone, and outside of Bundaberg, and even in towards the Sunshine Coast hinterland, some big rainfall accumulations can be expected, regardless of if this tropical cyclone makes landfall, or if it skirts down the coastline, because you can see an even split between the forecast models, that there will be a lot of rainfall around the core of the system here, and if it passes close enough to the Queensland coastline, there will be plenty of very heavy rainfall uh, to be made itself, uh, kind of known around the southeast corners of Queensland. Again, I just don't really see a world where this system completely recurves out from Queensland like the forecast models are suggesting. I do expect it to be very slow moving at this point. It's not going to have too much in the way of steering currents moving this system or directing this system in towards Queensland. But just the fact that we have that strong high pressure ridge in the Tasman Sea, I mean, I really don't see a tropical cyclone steamrolling and bulldozing its way through that. That would be an interesting feat, that's for sure. And this tropical cyclone here has also been tipped for, a, for the last couple of days by the GFS forecast model to be taken right in towards Queensland. That does mean something considering the GFS is most or more or well more often than not the most reliable forecast model that we have for tropical cyclone forecasts and projections but yeah it's certainly some interesting stuff my advice right now is for those between the Whitsundays Sundays down to the northern areas of the Sunshine Coast there is a slim chance of a tropical cyclone coming through your area especially if you live around the Rockhampton area I wouldn't really be calling it a slim chance anymore I'd be calling it a, a closer towards a moderate chance at this time whilst we don't know what exactly is expected and that means that we shouldn't be pre preparing for a tropical cyclone right now simple preparations like taking uh, out loose trees that could be falling on your property in the event of a tropical cyclone or pruning up the garden, making sure you've got loose, ob uh, loose objects out of the way in case a tropical cyclone does come through sometime this weekend or into early next week. That's probably a good idea to start uh, taking uh, into account right now. I reckon that it is now time to prepare as if a tropical cyclone is imminent along the Queensland coastline. Whilst there are no watches or warnings in this system, is still at least five or six days away from the Queensland coastline. There are simple preparations that you can make that will do you no harm regardless of if a tropical cyclone comes or doesn't come ashore. So I'd recommend pruning up the garden and getting loose furniture and loose objects in the backyard tidied up and organized in a fashion that where you can just grab and go with them uh, in case a tropical cyclone landfall is much more imminent and expected to occur. In terms of buying stuff for a tropical cyclone right now like bottled water and toilet paper and whatnot, the non-perishables that you will need in the event of a tropical cyclone, especially if you live remote. Whilst that is probably a good idea to do if you're planning a weekly shop and getting some stuff ready, there's no need to run to the shops right now and start panic buying stuff. Just add it onto your weekly grocery haul and maybe have about 20 or 30 percent extra in reserve, especially in the terms of bottled water. You can't really go wrong considering it doesn't go off. And if you, in the event that you don't have a tropical cyclone come through, then you can always use a bottle set at a later date. So again, getting yourself some bottled water is a good idea, but again, absolutely no need and no reason to panic by it this time. That's often the downfall of a lot of people in these tropical cyclones is they go and buy everything that they see on the shops. And not only do they have a house full of cyclone supplies that they don't need in the event of a tropical cyclone actually busting out along the Queensland coastline, uh, but it starves the supply from everybody else. And I know that they're very short for supplies up on the central Queensland into the north Queensland area right now. I mean, the shelves in Mackay are completely empty. And I don't think at any point has anyone been saying that Mackay is on the cards for a tropical cyclone landfall. So I can't
can't imagine what it's like down in Rockhampton or Gladstone right now. But again, just make sure you're being considerate of everybody else and make sure that you know that there isn't a tropical cyclone threat right now for the Queensland coastline. It is just the chance of a landfall sometime in the next five or six days. And again, I will have definitive answers on this by tomorrow morning in the tomorrow morning's forecast update. I can assure you that. That's all that I have time for on Tropical Cyclone Alfred this morning. There will be a later forecast update on it tonight, so make sure you do stick around for that. It'll be going into great detail about Tropical Cyclone Alfred's future and what it's expected to do for the Queensland coastline, again, with the information that I'll have available to me tonight. But yeah, the checking back in on the system, it's doing quite well for itself, looking pretty impressive on the satellite imagery. Let's head over west now and take a look at Tropical Cyclone Bianca because she is not looking so good. You can see Tropical Cyclone Bianca has been blasted apart by wind shear overnight as it gets down in towards the jet stream. It got up to an impressive Category 4 strength Tropical Cyclone status. It was a very significant system at its peak intensity and I was quite thankful that it wasn't actually going for the West Australian coastline at that intensity because that would be a big, big concern that's for sure. But a small system in a favourable environment, when was it not going to rapidly intensify like that? And I think I initially said Category 4 status was expected to be its peak intensity. Nailed that forecast. This tropical cyclone was certainly an impressive one to have a look at. It's stripping in a lot of cloud and a lot of junk down in towards the southwest corner of Western Australia which might I add is just being annoying for people that like their garden and want the sunny weather. Uh, that cloud should clear out over the coming couple of days as well but in terms of rainfall there really isn't an awful lot expected across the southwest corner of western australia a few showers are possible here and there throughout the course of today and especially in towards tonight into later on tonight into early tomorrow morning we could be seeing a few showers around the perth metro area uh clearing out by around lunchtime tomorrow by the looks of things and a few showers and storms also expected in towards the wheat belt and even out towards the goldfields as well between norseman and kalgoorlie there might actually be a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak uh through there later on tomorrow afternoon and evening you can see convective available potential energy values they're a little bit higher than zero i mean nothing impressive that's for sure on the Queensland side of things but this will certainly be enough to spark a severe thunderstorm outbreak out in the goldfields of the wheat belt the temperatures are there the humidity is going to be there from the tropical cyclones remnant energy being dispersed across western Australia so I would be watching this one quite uh, quite closely in terms of showers and thunderstorms at the southwest corner of western Australia don't get your hopes up there's really nothing expected here and again there's what's glorious three-figure rainfall accumulations that we were looking at on the rainfall forecasts they're now looking pretty uh, miserable and I think there'll be a lot of places that'll be lucky if they get even a millimeter of rainfall throughout the course of tomorrow and whilst there could be some better falls around the hills around dwelling up and jaradale there could be falls up to about 10 millimeters there i would not be getting your hopes up for anything more than a millimeter if you live in the perth metro area especially in the northern suburbs i reckon they're just going to miss out completely and a few thunderstorms could bring accumulations up to 25 millimeters out of the gold fields and into parts of the eastern extremities of the wheat belt but yeah tropical cyclone bianca it is not a threat to western australia at all and it's a dying tropical cyclone well out to sea well offshore from wa and it has been it has had a very good run but it doesn't look like it's going to provide southwest wa with the rainfall that it so desperately needs at this time. Unfortunately, that is. Anyways, back to the rainfall forecast across northern Australia. Nothing really that's standing out to me right now. Northwest WA is looking pretty dry. Northwest, or the northern parts of the Northern Territory are also looking really dry. And if we take a look at their drought monitoring map right now, it is actually quite concerning how little rainfall some of these locations have had. And we can already start to see mild to moderate drought-like conditions extending across parts of the Northern Territory and in towards WA as well, which is very concerning indeed, especially considering that this is their wet season. They do desperately need this rainfall right now. And the fact that they're not getting it is definitely call, uh, or causing quite a bit of concern for some of the agricultural communities in the Northern Territory. WA has been fine for the most part, and the same deal with Queensland. We know that they've been fine, but a bit of rainfall would be very welcome across the central and the southeastern corners of Queensland. Uh, but in part, in, uh, apart from that, in terms of the rainfall forecast, it is, like I said, looking pretty miserable across much of Australia. A few showers and thunderstorms much later on into the forecast period across interior parts of Queensland by the looks of things. That'll be an interesting thing that we're probably worth uh, having a look at in a future forecast update. But apart from that, nothing really to write home about in terms of rainfall across anywhere else of Australia at this time. But yeah, Tropical Cyclone Alpha, it's certainly keeping us busy here over in the Coral Sea. It's an interesting system, that's for sure. That's all that I have time for today. Tropical Cyclone Alpha, keeping us very busy here over in the Coral Sea. You can see it is a significant tropical cyclone, still intensifying as well. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's Orange Green right now. Again, I could not run the show without them, and their support is much appreciated. Let me know what you think of the videos in the comment section down below, and thank you to all of the new subscribers and supporters over the last couple of days. Their support is incredible, so thank you so much to all of the people that have joined the channel. And click the link over in the description and head it over to the Facebook page as well again again the support over there has been unbelievable too but that is all for me this morning and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye